All right, Bulls and Bears, welcome back to another report. You're watching Bull Boom Bear Bust. I can't do that very hard. Still have a broken finger. Still haven't found a surgeon. Anyways, that boom was for uh, read me, that was for Tyler up in Oregon. Thank you for supporting the channel. And uh, if you ask me to do that, I can't do it every episode. That's ridiculous. But I'll do the Bull Boom Bear Bust upon request uh, if you want. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. We have a lot to talk about. A uh, survey came out giving a dose of economic reality that I think a lot of, maybe a lot of you won't be surprised, but I think a lot of people that don't follow this type of news that we put out here, a lot of people would be very surprised by this. And I know some people are going to say, you're doom and gloom. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just reporting the news, folks. It's not me putting out the data or the data that I give. It's not me making it up, right? I show you the sources, right? Let's go to this article right here, and then we're going to talk about a few more things here, but let's jump right into this here. New survey. Half of Americans struggle making their housing payments, folks. Half. <laughs> uh, so this is not something I'm making up. This was a survey put out. People are robbing Peter to pay Paul. Uh, what's the names I used the other day? Robbing Frank to pay Fred, right? It's crazy what people are doing right now and this article points it out a lot of the things we talked about uh, and then we've been outlining here for a while the question is what's going to happen because of this right first let's get into the news then let's talk about what's going to happen because of this here all right um redfin survey nearly 3000 homeowners and renters found that half uh struggling to pay their bills uh people that purchased Homes more recently are actually struggling more with the higher mortgage rates. Uh, rents are struggling the most. Yes, I think that's pretty obvious. Um, what are these people doing to get by? Scraping by by working extra hours. We know that second jobs are exploding. Second and third jobs were in record territory for people working the amount of jobs. They have more people carrying multiple jobs than ever. Um, skipping meals. We talked about that. 22%, folks, that's nearly one in four people skipping meals. Now, I've been doing a little of that lately, but that's because of health issues. There's something called intermittent fasting, which actually I feel pretty good. I didn't have anything all day today except for some green tea, and I feel pretty good. Um, what else are people doing to get by? Uh, but in other words, back to that previous uh, topic there, people are skipping meals not because of health reasons like I'm doing, because they want to save money. They're struggling. Uh, another 20% reported selling belongings. We talked about that, what, last month, two months ago? That thrift stores are seeing a record number of people, uh, not thrift stores, sorry, uh, pawn shops are seeing a record number of people going in to sell things, right? And actually people are buying less, so inventory is starting to stack up. I can't remember if that was last month or maybe February. But if you go back to that video, we talk about how pawn shop owners are reporting a big surge in inventory, stuff starting to stack up, more people trying to sell stuff less people buying stuff, right? So what I said in that video is these pawn shops <clears throat> are going to need to start cutting prices. Uh, what else here? Uh, borrowing money, 20%. People said they borrowed money from family or friends to get by. Uh, people are also dipping into their savings, 14% struggling. Uh, this is millennials have dipped into their, into their retirement savings. Folks, this is happening. It's just happening on the down low, right? Most people are not going to come out and say, hey, I'm struggling. How you doing? How you doing today? You ask somebody how they're doing. What do they say? They say they're doing fine. Right? What's the answer? I'm fine. Right? I'm doing okay. How about you? I'm fine. Uh, if people really told you what was going on, the answer wouldn't be fine. In fact, half the people, if they really wanted to get this off their chest, they would say, wow, I'm struggling. The cost of living is nailing me. I'm working hard. I'm borrowing money here and there. Borrowing money from my mom uh, who doesn't have a lot of money herself because she's struggling because half people are struggling, half the people surveyed are struggling. So this is difficult for a lot of people is the bottom line. So if you're struggling, don't feel like the lone ranger, all right? Uh, but the point of this channel is to one, not struggle if we can, look for investments, look for opportunities, uh, be smart with what you do with your money. But the other part of it is if you are struggling, don't be discouraged it's not the end of the world because this is something this economic situation here is something that actually 
on purpose, in my opinion, puts people into debt. The more debt you're in, the more money the banks make and the bankers, um, the corporations, the uh, people that run these companies, they want you buying things from them. So you see commercials everywhere you look, billboards, commercials, buy this, buy this, buy this. And uh, a lot of people are happy based on spending money, right? There's this big portion of the population out there that they're kind of depressed and they don't really have anything going on. They're not uh, doing too much besides working. You know, people get off work, go home, go to work, go home, go to work. Life falls into a rut. People get into a routine. And to some people, there's retail therapy. They just want to go out and spend money. That's the one thing that makes them feel better. And sometimes people don't even have a hobby or a passion to make them feel good or to give them any sense of having fun. So what do they do? They spend money. They go on vacation, right? Nothing wrong with that. Uh, trying to fill that void. Uh, one thing that I've been doing that's uh, made me feel a little bit better about not traveling and not doing a lot of stuff, and I can't really travel anyway. I've got some young kiddos that kind of prevent me from being able to travel, including I have an autistic kid who's very difficult to travel with, right? I'm, For example, I might put this kid on a plane, an airplane, and he might start freaking out, throwing stuff, hitting. He's, yeah, yeah, he gets easily freaked out. So traveling for me, not so easy. Just one example of what people like to do. So what I do to kind of have fun is I do side projects. I still write music. Uh, I still try to work out uh, when I can, which I think is very fun. Um, I've got some health issues that I've been dealing with. Therefore, I'm, I'm fasting like I told you guys earlier in this video. So just a little about me, what I'm doing. Uh, but a lot of people, yeah, they do retail therapy in order to make themselves feel better because they don't have really any fun or any hobbies that they like to do, I would recommend do what you like to do, even if you don't really have much time, right? I'll give you an example. I've got one, like, let me count them, probably over 50 songs that are incomplete, some of them without lyrics, some of them are just a few verses that need a chorus, uh, like over 50, right? And I've been putting them out uh, recently, but not very much, right? Because I'm so busy. Uh, with this channel, but also just life, family, family members getting sick, family members dying. I just lost an aunt. She was 98. Um, we celebrated her life. We didn't mourn her death. Of course, we mourned for a minute, but it was more of a celebration that she lived to be 98. She lived, lived a very good life. She invested in real estate. She had three homes. Um, she was able to pass down some of her um, life savings and life wealth to her uh, younger people in her family. So it was a celebration, not just because of the, the money thing, but just because she lived to be 98, she had a great life. So it's all in the eye of the beholder. It's how you look at things. Try to be positive. I try not to be negative, even though some people say I'm doom and gloom. Try to be positive. But I just lost a family member. And uh, the point I was getting at is that life gets in the way. Life is busy. Do what you like to do. I'm putting out music, maybe one song every month, if I can do that, just because I'm so busy. Um, I try to do 30 minutes a day of, of music, even though I really don't have much time. Sometimes I'm up to one, two in the morning just to get those things done or just to put my hobbies, just to fit my hobbies in the day, right? Because the day is busy. Bottom line is on this channel, I want everybody here to be happy regardless of your financial situation. Uh, hopefully this channel helps you. Uh, either one, realize that you're, you're not alone. If you're struggling right now, if you're in debt, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, if you're taking out money here to pay over here, uh, you know, all those things that we hear about. But on the other hand, if you're doing well, if you're investing, if you have money saved up, you're ready for an economic downturn and you're ready for inflation to get worse. You're ready either way. That's where I think we all need to strive to be. Uh, but if not, you know, it's not the end of the world. Keep working. Uh, keep doing what you love to do. Keep doing your passion, even though life's busy, even though you're being pulled this way and that way. Like most people are really, really busy. Again, multiple people or more people now than ever working multiple jobs, right? So it's going to be getting very interesting. I said 2024 was going to be an interesting year. And I think we're going to see a lot of things that are going to make your eyeballs pop out of your head uh, going into the middle and into late 2024 right but let's get into some other news here real quick by the way the music that i mention every now and then i used to put it on this channel i did put a link down below this video i'll put it in uh, the pinned comment as well it's a link to my um music channel 
here on YouTube. It has some of the songs that you used to hear. Uh, for those of you that have, were here maybe a couple of years ago, I used to put the songs in the intro and on the outro. It kind of delayed my video output because it was editing and more stuff I had to put in and stuff like that. So I stopped doing that. And uh, But the link's down there if you like to hear those songs. Well, let's talk about this. Farley over at State Street. He is saying the Fed may cut rates three to four times this year. So obviously he sees some economic pain ahead if the Fed's going to be doing that many rate cuts. Either that or he sees inflation going down. He didn't really say inflation was going down. So I'm thinking that he sees something uh, dire on the economy. He didn't really come out and say exactly what. The interview is over at Bloomberg for those of you that want to check it out. But three to four rate cuts, what would prompt the uh, central bank to cut rates that many times in 2024? Please let me know what you think about that down in the comments. All right, next, something else that we keep a close eye on here, along with real estate, along with jobs, along with the tons of other economic indicators, is the cost of cars, right? When people have a lot of debt and people have a lot of car loan debt and all kinds of debt right now, obviously, car prices. Car prices should be coming down, right? Well, it's actually happening a bit here. The Mannheim Used Vehicle Index, go right over here. Wholesale used vehicle prices decreased in the first half of April. Uh, by 1.9%, and you say, well, that's not a lot. That's barely not even 2%, but that was just one month. If this keeps going every month, you're talking about a 25% decline, close to a 24% decline year over year if you get 2% a month, right? Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but that would be significant if it did happen. A 25% drop in car prices, that would be huge. Uh, and it might start bringing car prices down to where they were a couple years ago. It would take another two years of declines like that, though, to get prices back to where they were in 2020, unfortunately. But the mid-month Mannheim Used Vehicle Index, 13.7% uh, 13 13 lower than a year ago, which was April 2023. So we're only down just under 14% for now, year over year. But if these numbers that came out in March um or in april rather from march which was 1.9 percent you're going to see the next year over year number when we look at it next year it could be close to 24 percent if this pace keeps going and if you think the pace is not going to keep going what's going to happen to make vehicles more affordable for people our interest rates going to drop our employers are going to start giving out huge pay raises that Nobody expects to happen. Uh, I don't expect that to happen. I expect employers to use any extra profits that they get to go buy back their own stock, to give the CEO a raise. <laughs> That's what I expect companies to do with most of their money. Of course, they have to pay people enough to keep them in the door and keep them from quitting and to keep them from going to, in this case, McDonald's here in California, which fast food now pays $20 an hour here in California. So that's going to have a huge impact. Uh, talk about that topic for a minute here away from the used cars $20 an hour to work at a fast food place a lot of businesses are going to have a hard time keeping people uh, now that people know that you're going to make $20 an hour at a fast food place right so people working at banks a lot of them only start off at $17, $18 an hour here in California they might be jumping ship away from Bank of America over to Burger King right who knows uh, so then banks may have to raise their wages or all these other businesses may have to raise their wages in order to keep employees from bailing and going to Subway, McDonald's, wherever, right? Crazy times. But anyways, vehicle prices coming down. Uh, half of the people surveyed having trouble making their housing payment, folks. Things are happening. You may not see it. If you just watch the regular uh, news reports or your local news, your business news, you may not hear this. But things are happening. The struggle is real for many people. That means the economy is going to be going into uh, a transition, right? I'm not saying it's going to crash because they could just keep on pumping money into this, but that's going to cause more inflation, right? So there's a trap right now. Um, there's no way, no easy way out, right? Deflation, inflation. Of course, I think they'd rather inflate this because that's less obvious than falling prices but even with all the money being pumped into the economy right now even with all the bank lending happening all the credit slash debt being issued we're still seeing some corrections look at the vehicle prices right so things are happening uh, not as fast not as quickly as many would like 
the things that are happening bottom line thanks everybody for being here please make sure you are still subscribed and come back for the next video we're going to navigate this economy together keep second everybody bye now peace